Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. In today's video, we are going to be talking about what steps do you really need in your skincare routine? You know, I remember a couple years ago when the 10 step uh, Korean skincare routine was trending. I remember there being a lot of people saying, oh, this is exactly what I need, 10 steps. And other people were saying, whoa, that is way too many for me. A little bit of a spoiler alert. I'm only going to say I believe three steps are absolutely essential. Do you know what they are? So let's go ahead and kick things off with the category of cleansers. So first up, we have your basic daily cleanser. These come in such a wide variety. You know, you can get a gel cleanser, you can get a cream cleanser, you can get a jelly cleanser, but they all do the same basic thing and that is wash your face. I do believe that this step is absolutely essential. I think that some people out there are probably able to get away with washing their face with shampoo, but we collectively as a skincare community hate those people. And don't get me wrong, it's just because we're jealous of them. Because you know what? If somebody can wash their face with shampoo, they don't have any idea the struggles that we endure. But I have come to realize that cleanser is very, very personal. A lot of people find their perfect cleanser and they stick to it. And you know, there's no reason not to. If that's a cleanser that works for you, then stick with it. But there's also a lot of cleansers on the market that claim to do a very wide variety of things. You know, everything from cleansers that reduce your acne to cleansers that are anti-aging. And what I'm going to say is, uh, no matter how strong those claims are, I think the most important part of cleansers is the cleansing aspect. Anything else may be a nice additional benefit. But again, the real point of cleanser is simply to cleanse your face. It should not make you feel too dry, which is why it's hard to just make a statement of this one cleansers for every skin type. No, it's probably going to vary based on your skin type and your needs, but you know, it should just cleanse your skin and remove your makeup. And if it is not removing all of your makeup, then it may benefit you to also have a cleansing oil or a cleansing balm. I truly think that not everybody needs this step. If you don't wear makeup, then you may not need a makeup removing balm or oil. However, these do help to remove SPF as well. So I tend to think it's nice to have around. Uh, I found that there's quite a wide variety of these at the drugstore. There's also quite a few high end that I personally splurge on and we've never really figured out why. <laughs> And I should probably talk about makeup wipes next because this is something that a lot of people use to remove their makeup. And I personally, I really do not like these products. However, I do keep them around because they're nice to have when you're camping, even if you're traveling in some cases, but I don't love them. I find them to not be that effective and I think you have to really scrub, whereas the oil in cleansing oils or balms helps to break down the makeup. These require a lot of scrubbing for me. It truly is the one step in skincare routines where I really wanna put a cleansing balm or oil into anyone's hand anytime I see these come out. And in the event you wear really heavy makeup, what I would recommend to you is a dual phase makeup remover. This is Lancome's by Facile Clinique has one as well, and there are a few at the drugstore. I find these really helpful if you're just not getting your makeup off. You know, waterproof mascaras, lashes, heavy eye makeup, you might need to have a product like this around, but for people who just wear lighter makeup, you probably don't need this. I'm amazed how many products we have in just the cleansing step alone. But let me go ahead and mention exfoliators. Oh, so this is a physical exfoliator. We will talk about chemical exfoliators throughout this video. Uh, I used to be pretty opposed to physical exfoliators. I did dedicate two weeks of my life to trying this particular one, in fact. Uh, and I, after doing that, I feel like it could be a good step for some people, you know, if you're really having issues getting your skin to not look dull, I do think a physical exfoliator may actually be for you. Real unpopular opinion, I know. But keep in mind that you don't wanna over exfoliate your skin. So if you are using chemical exfoliators, which have been trending for a long time now, you may not want to introduce a physical exfoliator in addition to that. Don't forget that cleansing tools such as the Foreo and the Clarisonic are also technically physical exfoliators. So we definitely have a case of pick one, you don't need all, all of them may actually be harmful or at the very least, don't use them together. 
And then finally, micellar water. I know a lot of people really don't like micellar water, and then some people swear by them. I am a person who does swear by micellar water once a day in the morning, and it's simply because the water in my city is quite not that great. <laughs> And the whole backstory with micellar water is it was developed in France because they had hard water and they wanted to give an alternative way of cleansing your skin without using that water. So you are supposed to be able to use the micellar water and not wash it off afterwards. Some people do. Some people use the micellar water and still follow with water and some people don't. I just think it's one of those steps where, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if you're having a lot of trouble with your skin, it could be something to try. I don't even know what to call this next category here. We got toners through ampoules. Is that additional moisture? Nope. You are giving away too much. Toner. This is a really interesting step because several years ago, many years ago actually, I would have had to say this is an essential step. And the reason is, years ago, cleansers used to be at a basic pH, and so you wanted to bring your skin back into balance by using a much more acidic pH product in your toner. We don't really need to worry about that anymore because we've balanced our cleansers better, and at this point, what does a toner do then? There's been kind of a shift in what toners do as a result, and I think these exfoliating toners, this being a chemical exfoliator, uh, these, these certainly do give you an alternative to physical exfoliation. They help you to turn over your skin. Uh, this is not the only kind of toner out there, though. There are a lot of hydrating toners. There are also misting toners, and the point of those are often to prepare your skin to spread your serums better, your essence better, which is ultimately why in this very tight on money phase that I'm currently in, I'm not really buying any new toners. Instead, I've decided to use up any of the mist that I have around. This was a poor choice to grab because I've actually been finishing off a lot of drugstore mists. I have the pixie mists, which this is not close to in price. But what do you get from a mist? You get a very light layer of hydration that your serums can spread better over. So I think we might as well talk about refreshing mists while we're here. These are products that are often made to be used in your makeup routine, point being to blend together any powders that you have on your face. But don't think that you are stuck using them in your makeup routine. They really do transfer over quite nicely into the toning step. And then we have Essence. Now, Essence has become an absolute favorite step in my skincare routine, as I am somebody who has much drier skin. What an Essence does is it, in general, delivers very intense hydration. I think that if you're struggling with dry skin, you know, if you're just, no matter what you do, your skincare routine leaves your skin feeling dry, it may benefit you greatly to incorporate an essence. The Katao essence, which I talked about in my favorite essences video, is such a good choice for dry skin, but there are some that are more balanced for combination to oily skin. I'd ultimately say I do think Essence is an optional step, but I think it is a very beneficial step to some people. It is one that I do not plan to remove from my skincare routine. I feel like it is a tricky one for me though, because I didn't use Essence for so long. Once I tried it, I'm, uh, I, I won't go without Essence. And then ampoules. I think a lot of people are confused by this step. Ampoules are supposed to give you a, a very intense treatment typically of hydration, uh, and I do think they do that. In fact, for me, I've come to realize that ampoules often replace sheet masking for me, but I'll talk more about that when we get into the mask section of this video. I do think that not everybody needs an ampoule, and I even think that if you do enjoy ampoules, I think you don't need them every single day, but they are so nice when you want your skin to look really hydrated. Maybe you want to glow for the day. Maybe you have a big event because it's much further further into the future than it is now. A big event, is that grocery shopping? And then finally, serums. Now I'm gonna assume that almost everybody watching this skincare video today uses serums. I think if you are a skincare enthusiast, you are not going to go without a serum. And the reason is the serum is your treatment phase. Serums provide you everything from smoothing ingredients to antioxidant ingredients to anti-aging ingredients to anti-acne ingredients. They treat whatever skin issue you have. So, you know, again, those people who are washing their face with shampoo probably don't use a serum and that probably works for them. But for any of us, 
with a, a, a you know a concern that we want to treat absolutely you want to include a serum so while everyone may not need a serum I do believe that another essential step is moisturizer. This one's tricky though, because much like with the cleansers, I think you've got to find the right moisturizer for your skin type. You know, when we talk about moisturizers, we have anything from gels to creams, and you just got to pick what works for your skin. But I do feel it's essential, you know, when you're reading skincare studies, one of the main markers that they look at is how much water is lost through the skin. So that's something that you are fighting to avoid if you want your skin to look fresh and plump, and you just gotta find a moisturizer that will give your skin that. Now on the note of moisturizer, I find that, you know, there's certainly quite a few out there that are very pricey, that have a lot of claims on them. In my personal opinion, if your serum is your treatment step, if you are using that step and it is a great serum that is working for you, I think you can cut corners on the cost of moisturizer and go with a very basic one. And again, this is just my opinion, but you know, I feel that if you are giving your skin antioxidants, if you are giving your skin beneficial ingredients in that serum step, then you probably don't need them in your moisturizer as well. That moisturizer is just locking in. I'm gonna talk about oil next because I've found oil has suddenly become controversial in skincare communities. I personally think that not everybody needs oil, but I, I really don't love the anti-oil trend. It's kind of fascinating to me actually because every time somebody's like, oh, I don't believe in oil, I think it's bad for your skin, I'm always like, have you read the ingredients of moisturizers? Cause hate to break it to you, but you probably should. I really think with oils, it's a very simple case of some people are probably going to love them. Oils are extremely emollient. They often help to lock in moisture. And I, you know, I think some people like them and some people probably hate them. They do often feel a little more greasy. I did grab squalane for this video, which is probably not the best example of oils. And yet I think it also is the best example because it's very lightweight. It is very beneficial on your skin and whether you have dry or oily skin, I think this is one everybody can like. So do you really need a night cream or a sleeping mask in your skincare routine? A lot of people say yes because they strongly believe that the skin does this magical refreshing thing overnight, but that's not exactly well documented. Now I just called moisturizer essential, so of course I think that it is important to use moisturizer at all times, whether morning or night, but I don't necessarily think that everybody needs a night cream. In fact, there have been many times in my life where I have run out of night creams and I don't panic, I don't immediately place a Sephora order, instead what I do is I actually layer my oil with my daytime moisturizer to give me that exact same experience as as a sleeping mask or night cream. You know, those are products that are formulated to feel a little bit heavier on the skin. Basically, these are just products that are formulated to feel heavier on the skin in the hopes of delivering more moisture overnight, and they do that, but I also feel that an oil and a moisturizer does that as well. SPF, do you need it? I think you know the answer to this. Of course, I'm going to say this is an essential step beyond just, you know, superficial appearances, it is really important to protect your skin from the sun. And on the topic of sunscreen, I think it is important to find one that works for you. A lot of people have allergies to chemical sunscreen. It is one of few allergies that I have myself. Now I have to use physical filters. Uh, I've also heard that some people have not been able to find an SPF that works for them, neither chemical nor mineral, and that's that's hard. I have to admit that sounds very difficult. I can only hope that, uh, you know, you have hats, sunglasses, the SPF clothing, long sleeves, kicking it old school. Eye and lip products. So I grabbed an eye serum and an eye cream, and what I'm gonna tell you here is that I think that both of these steps are very optional, and yet some people find that they do need a separate eye cream from their moisturizer. And then some people absolutely do not and they are able to save a lot of money because eye creams are often very expensive. However, for that first category of people, they may deal with milia, which are those tiny little bumps around your eye area. If you do have those, it may benefit you to use an eye cream. They are formulated differently. The eye area is actually a slightly different pH from the rest of the skin, so it's possible 
to actually need an eye cream. But again, for a lot of people, nah, you can just use your moisturizer. Same deal with serums. One thing I did want to comment on with serums is that serums are often formulated, well, they are, eye serums are formulated directly for the eye area, and you may need to treat that skin differently, especially if your eye issues are say puffiness as opposed to just you know i would just want to smooth it out like the rest of my face so ingredients like caffeine are very beneficial for helping to fight puffiness but you may not want to use that caffeine on areas such as your forehead that is an ingredient that will help to uh, you know de-puff but it could also dehydrate so then lip products i have both a lip scrub and a lip balm I tend to think that most people will enjoy a lip balm, especially for overnight use. This one right here is one made for overnight. Very, very nice to apply to your lips and then wake up with much smoother lips. And there are also daytime balms that are made with SPF. Those could be beneficial for people who find themselves to be in the sun rather often. So while I don't feel it's necessarily essential, I do find it very beneficial and I think the vast majority of people will like it. With lip scrubs, oh, I just had quite a rant about this particular one in my last video, but I do feel that some people will benefit from lip scrubs. I'm one of them because I wear a lot of not only matte lipsticks, but those drying matte liquid lipsticks, although I haven't worn them lately. That is true. But if you do wear those types of makeup products, you probably will very much enjoy using a lip scrub. And if you don't, you may not need it. And the last category for this video is just gonna be an unpopular opinion. I feel it in my bones. But keep my skin type in mind, which is dry. I, I really don't love clay masks. I never have. I find them to not be useful for my skin. What about hydrating masks, right? kind of the same thing. When we're talking about hydrating masks, I found that it is more beneficial to me to use an essence, use those ampoules that I was talking about earlier and put that hydration on my face. And yes, even sheet masks. I know, who do I think I am? But I've really come to this conclusion after you know trying all of these and trying the products I talked about earlier. I think that if you're delivering a lot of hydration into your skin, that's what sheet masks do. If you've already done it, you may not need a sheet mask in addition. But worth mentioning, I do respect and realize that masks are really nice for pampering. You know, if you want to mask, don't let me sit here and tell you you can't do that. I think it is a very enjoyable step. I just honestly don't think it is as necessary as maybe we've been told. And then the category of peels. I don't feel that everybody needs a peel, especially if you are a younger person. You just may not need it. But it is true that for me, there are certain peels that have been pretty darn game-changing on my skin. And yet, I do feel it's important to keep in mind, you know, don't overdo AHAs or you will really feel it. Don't overdo exfoliation as a category, whether physical or chemical. And yet, it's very possible to say, I'm not going to use any of those. I want to only use an AHA peel. In which case, then it is a necessary product for you. And that's it. I hope I covered everything possible in a skincare routine. I probably didn't. We could probably get up to 50 steps if we wanted to. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.